What's up YouTube, Dougie Chong here. Welcome to today's episode where I'm gonna go over why I think the stock market is just way too high right now. This is probably gonna be the first of a few videos I make on this topic of the stock market just being way too high. I don't really like to make these videos since they are fairly negative, but I don't always wanna to say to buy certain stocks. Sometimes it's just not a good time to plow a lot of your money into the stock market. That being said, if you do not have even $1 in the stock market, any time is a good time to invest. You just gotta get started. And the other reason why I don't like making these videos is that I will be wrong for maybe the first one, two, three, four videos up to maybe a year or even two years. It'll just be wrong predictions. And each time it'll look pretty ridiculous. I'll say the market is way too high and it'll shoot up another 10% in like two weeks or something. This is because before most stock market crashes, stocks tend to go flying up Investors think they're invincible and they don't want to miss out on huge gains. I recently recommended purchasing both Hive stock and Planet 13 stock and both of these stocks went up tremendously, maybe about 30% in the span of a few weeks. The natural reaction for a beginner investor is to just pat themselves on the back, keep putting more money into the market. If green is all they know, they have no reason to think that the stock should plummet. But an experienced investor will know that 30% gains year over year is simply unsustainable for most companies. And a fall is sure to happen. One of the good things about the meme stock rally is that it did eventually crash and taught a lot of investors about how fast stocks without solid fundamentals can come crumbling down. In this video, I'll be going over three reasons why I think the stock market and most assets in general right now are overvalued and what I am going to do from an investing point of view. The first and most obvious reason is that we are still in a global pandemic. A lot of travel companies from Air Canada to Carnival Cruise Lines have been soaring up recently just because they see the end of the pandemic and think that they're going to be in the clear pretty soon, but the pandemic is not gone officially. I don't know how many times here in Canada we've had the economy start to reopen just to shut back down. I think I can see this happening two or three more times before maybe, and that's a big maybe, we fully open the economy up again. For this reason, I think a lot of stocks just priced in too much recovery, thought way too optimistically about the whole global situation. The second reason is just by looking at the numbers, these company valuations do not make any sense. Companies like Airbnb have valuations over 100 billion dollars and they do not even turn a profit yet. This happened recently with weed stocks which just went up a lot based on future potential and not on current revenue streams and even more so in the big tech bubble of the year 2000. The 2000 tech crash was certainly interesting because a new technology known as the internet was released and a lot of people simply did not understand it. To this day a lot of people still don't quite know what the internet is. I think valuations in companies such as Pets.com hit sky high marks and they produce little to no value. In this situation, it was only tech stocks and some did come out ahead in the long run, such as Amazon or Google. In today's market, almost everything universally is going up like crazy and there's no new technology, there's no internet. The only new technology is maybe cryptocurrencies, but that doesn't affect things like oil and gas. So I think a big correction is surely in store. The third reason why I think the stock market is in a bubble is that two other big asset classes are also in bubbles in cryptocurrency and real estate. Both are doing phenomenally well right now. The real estate industry here in Canada particularly is very alarming. If so many people are unemployed, how is the demand for housing so high still? My theory is that a lot of the unemployed people and the people that collected CERB aren't in the market to buy houses to begin with. And the whole pandemic actually boosted the purchasing power of people that were looking to buy houses. The only small sliver of properties, at least here in Toronto, that are seeing a slight downtick are those downtown entry level starter condos. These properties I would say are not a bad buy here today 
especially since you can lock in dirt cheap interest rates on pretty good loans here in Canada, and you don't have to fight off hordes of buyers as everyone is fleeing the city. Even one of my neighbors here in Toronto recently sold their house just to move to a suburb in Barrie. On the note of real estate, I'll also mention that renovating now probably isn't a good idea either. Renovation costs have recently gone up about 40% on average and with everyone doing renovations now, it is hard to get both materials and contractors. That being said, if now is the only time you can do renovations, then I guess it makes sense, but really, if you could wait, I would advise waiting. Cryptocurrencies have also seen a huge rise as of late. And while I'm a firm believer in cryptocurrencies, I do not see the risk as worth the reward at this point. I see a max of a two to three times return until the next inevitable crash. And is that really worth the risk of if the crash started today? I don't really think so. So that sums up why I think the stock market is in a bubble, just because two other asset classes are also at sky high levels. So what would I do with $10,000 as an investor today? After all, people are still making money and vacations aren't all that appealing right now. Do I recommend people plow all their money into Pokemon cards, do something like buy one of those Logan Paul packs, or maybe follow big financial institutions and go all in on Bitcoin. I personally wouldn't do any of those right now, maybe buy some Pokemon cards for fun, and I would avoid risky and unprofitable companies. I would instead focus on buying companies with rock solid fundamentals such as Apple, Amazon, McDonald's, or Enbridge. Even though stocks like Tesla and GameStop are trendy right now, I would avoid them at this point. That's it for this video guys, leave a like if this video helped you at all, don't forget to subscribe if you have not already. Enjoy the rest of your family day up here in Canada and see you in the next video.